Hello, and welcome to an intro to Anthro with two humans. I'm human number one, John McRae. And I'm human number two, John Lear. And this is a podcast where we reassess what it means to be human. And the title of today's episode is We Need to Talk About Indy, Archaeologists in Film and Television. <laughs> so are you we're gonna talk about movies today, John. Are you oh, love excited it. about it? Yes, I love Indiana Jones, and I'm so glad that I'm not surprised that it has intersected with our podcast. Um, but uh, it was yeah. only a matter of time. Only, only a matter of matter. time. Yeah. So, so recently, I was uh, came across an article, uh, and it was talking about Tom Felton, who mm. played Draco Malfoy in the Harry Potter films. Remember, Draco oh, was yeah, kind of course. a yes. villainous young kid. Yeah. And and Tom Felton has recently produced a movie called uh Canyon del Muerto. Uh and the thing is what this caught my attention for a couple reasons. Anytime you see an article about a uh child actor that doesn't involve <laughs> drug abuse or shoplifting or DUI, <laughs> you're always like, okay, that's a feel good story. You know, time what I mean? to celebrate. They survived. Right. <laughs> they survived. <laughs> because you you know Hollywood can be very hard on people, especially yeah, hell kids. Yeah. Oh God. But so, all ages. All yeah. ages. All yeah. right. Yeah. So uh well played, Mr. Felton, I guess I'll well say. Well done. Well done. <laughs> well done. Yes. Yeah. And the other reason this caught my attention was the movie is about Anne Axtell Morris. And Anne Axtell Morris, uh was one of the first female uh, American archaeologists back in like the 20s and 30s. And she's being played by Abigail Lowry, who's a Scottish actor. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's just, it's interesting to me because this is such a unique time in American an anthropology and archaeology. Egyptology and, or whatever they called it, yeah. right? Isn't that Egyptologist? Yeah. People yeah. people who raided tombs but under the guise that it was for science. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and it was and people were still trying to figure it out, you know. So uh Ann Morris was married to Earl Morris, who's one of the big names of Southwestern archaeology. Uh and even in Earl's obituary in 1957, Alfred Kidder, who's another big archaeologist in Southwestern archaeology, mm. uh, described Anne as being vivid and brilliant. Uh, Robert Berg, who wrote, who worked with the Morrises, described Anne as being an archaeologist of note in her own right. Mm. But yet, you know, people don't really know about Anne mm -hmm. Morris. And you know, it, it she took Malfoy. It took Draco. <laughs> To Draco to bring her to our attention. I know of all the subjects, I was like so blown away by it because not only is it Southwestern archaeology, which is right up your field, alley, mm -hmm. uh, but it's also that it's about a woman archaeologist, and uh, and so Anne Morris, she married, uh, she married Earl Morris back in the twenties. They they worked out in Canyon del Muerto and Canyon de Shea out in the the Diné or the Navajo Nation. They also went down to Yucatan and she worked on uh, Chichen Itza. I think they excavated uh, Chichen Itza. Those ch you know what the, about Chichen Itza, just to, <laughs> if I may, the stairs are too steep. Why'd they make them so small and steep? My know. wife and I went up that thing and she froze. Jennifer froze really? halfway up. Really? Would not go up, would not go down. I could not. Wow. I mean, seriously, I just sit down with her for a while. I wish they'd made them a. Yeah. I'm just saying, in the future, for those people yeah. who make, yeah. Well, maybe they could go back in and redesign them. Or something. I mean, yeah, <laughs> take every other stair out or something. Yeah. Maybe feet feet were smaller or something back then. Or something. <laughs> like, they yeah. weren't used to like our large 20th century <laughs> feet or something. Well, they were all aliens. That's why. <laughs> So, uh, so Anne was right in the thick of it, though, and she even has written some books. She wrote uh, uh, a book called "Digging in Yucatan," and she wrote a book called "Digging in uh, the Southwest America or Southwestern United States." And uh, the thing is, I tried to get them; they're very expensive. <laughs> I wish I wish I could afford to get copies of those books. But anyway, yeah. I got a copy of the uh, Earl Morris book. But I'm telling you, if you can get those books now, because once this movie comes out. 
They're Boom. Gonna be fly, They're going to sky. The show. <laughs> God, maybe that's something we should do. We should buy them all up. Just yeah, just flash <laughs> forward to three years from now with us, just with cartons of Ann Morris's reprints that we paid for in our garage. Well, yeah, that goes up with our ideas about like uh, opening up Seven Elevens, and <laughs> you had an idea about opening Seven Elevens, laundromats, and car washes. Yeah, things that just got to generate their own money. You don't have to <laughs> you be just in go there, pick but... up. Yeah, put soap in and pick up the quarters. <laughs> <laughs> and just keep them in quarters. Yeah, Don't take yeah. them to the bank. Just like bury yeah. them out in your backyard. <laughs> uh, so anyway, Anne was right in the thick of all of this early archaeology, and people don't really know about her. So I think when the movie comes out, I think we need to go and see it. You and you and me, oh, and that's great. and then talk about the movie. And, and I think that the director is actually, I think he lives in Albuquerque. So I may have to try to. <laughs> have to let's see if we can to... interview him. That's fantastic. Yeah. Let's do it. I'll try let's to bump it. into him. Yeah. Let's go out in that uh, turpentine uh, excavation site uh, <laughs> that you took me to. Yeah. <laughs> we, could inter- we, could t- we could, we could interview him out there. That'd be cool. Yeah. And so um, with that said about Anne, I'm just so impressed that this movie is dealing with a female scientist because I myself feel that we need to have more people of color and more women in the sciences because I, I feel like you get a different perspective on, on if you have women and people, people from different backgrounds bring different information and different uh, perspectives on any of the problems that you're tackling in science. And not to cut to the chase, but women are smarter. And I can say this from experience because I have a son and a daughter. And once you have a son <laughs> and a daughter, as you watch them grow, you realize that <laughs> men are stupid. Just stupid. <laughs> Girls do everything first. They potty train. They talk. They, everything first. And yet they're underrepresented in a lot of the sciences or tech industries. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Um, My daughter's I've, in AP biology, AP biology. Really? Yes, yeah, she really? is. Yeah. Killing it. That's great. Um, but I would also go, since we're here, I might as well say also, I love the all female Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm not sure. It's unpopular. I don't know why. It's like, um, you know, <laughs> It's tough. I mean, people get used to the first thing that come across so that you've got that. And then you add the patriarchy to it. And there's yeah. no way those women were going to be accepted in that right. movie. Now, no you, and I, you and I have done a lot of theater over the years. And yes, we we've have. also done a lot of improv. Yes, we have. And, and what I've always found interesting is in the improv shows that we worked on, we always had at least as many women or more women than men in the cast. Yes. That which was at the time in the nineties, when we were doing it was unheard of. Isn't that crazy? Nobody did it. In fact, women, there were maybe one in a cast. uh, Second city, I think only had a maximum of two women in every cast of like eight until like, like the, like the two thousands or something. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy to me because, first of all, all the women we had in our shows were hilarious. They were all brilliant, funny, and also they always brought, like, you have more women in it. It's like different jokes, different yes. scenes that you would never get if you had all men in the in the cast. Absolutely. And, no question. And it's, and it's all, you know, it's like, I love John Belushi. <laughs> I love Chris Farley. But you get eight guys all being John Belushi and Chris Farley in a cast. It gets pretty tiresome to watch it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 There's a, yeah. There's still a lot of that. A lot of that. Yeah. In comedy. So I, and then I had a guy just recently, I heard a guy saying that, that the bridesmaids, he felt emasculated after watching bridesmaids. What? That (laughs) is one of the singular, most funny movies I've ever seen. The, the puking scene, the diarrhea, the, that whole scene. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. I mean, that is maybe the funny, and I put that up there, you know, with spinal tap and, and yeah. some, you know, yeah. I mean, that was just a straight out funny. Yeah. That's Jesus. the way I feel about it. But yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I don't know, I mean, man. 
I have friends who come up to me and go, oh, it's a tough time to be a guy now, isn't it? And I'm like, <laughs> for like three seconds, yeah. for 3,000 years, <laughs> can, you, can you hold off on that for like... Yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> just, you know, I kind of felt like uh, there's only one time I've ever felt emasculated in my life. Emasculated? And, and, well, I don't even know what that means. You take away their masculinity completely. Just I mean, remove but, it. But what is that? Oh, yeah. Okay. What was the one time? It, uh, it was back in the 90s when my ex-wife, my wife at the time, my ex-wife and I, mm-hmm. went down to Indiana to see Tom Jones. <laughs> and, <laughs> and just so you know, yeah, so this is all. You thought this was going to, when I said talk about India, I'm talking about when I went down to Indiana to see Tom Jones. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I remember us going, it was like a small venue, Crown Plaza or whatever it was they called it down there. And uh, as you're walking in, it's all a bunch of dudes with their girlfriends and their their wives. And we're all kind of like smirking at each other, you know, about like, oh, or, yeah, Tom Jones, whatever. And we get in there and the lights come up. Tom Jones comes out. And I swear to God, it was like, whoo, every man in the audience disappeared. Every man disappeared. <laughs> And it was just Tom Jones, 5,000 women having a moment, making love. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was panties uh, flying. And yeah. don't they all throw their panties at him? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and uh, and I remember thinking, this is like the closest to being a ghost I've ever felt. You know, like in the movies where like somebody's a ghost and they're waving their arms like, hey, I'm right here. Can you hear me? I'm right here. Can you see me? My wife at, at the time couldn't see me, couldn't hear me. And, <laughs> and it was like Tom Jones had like reached out and personally like to every man in the audience and pinched off our genitalia. Wow. <laughs> right that on. That was like emasculating. And I remember yeah. going in at intermission, going into the bathroom with all those guys that had been like smirking and everything. All of us silent <laughs> in the bathroom, <laughs> just with our heads down, knowing that we had to go out there for another hour and a half. You guys couldn't even out. you couldn't even find your penis in order to hold it to pee. You couldn't even <laughs> say it's right. gone. It was gone. It was silence, gone. silence. Crazy. Not a joke. Not a peep. Not a smirk. Anything. Tom <laughs> Jones had out masculine all of us, and he was probably seventy at the time, or something. <laughs> sixty. You know. <laughs> 60 yeah. or something just made it worse you know <laughs> i know <laughs> so great i had a similar experience on set once we were shooting uh a we- our we- a western comedy i was yeah. in called quick draw and there was this guy who played a native american on it and he was a native this native american guy <laughs> who was like in his he was in his like late 60s early 70s yeah. and uh he took his shirt off on set and and I wasn't I was faced away from set, but he took his shirt off, and the whole set went silent. <laughs> and there was like a hundred people, and the whole went silent. Everybody froze, and I was like looking around. I was like, "What's going on?" And every woman, every gay man on our set was just <laughs> locked on this <laughs> this gentleman, and his just he was just just beautiful. ripped or was he just he like was ripped, ripped and he was just you know he was just you know. Yeah. handsome as hell and he just owned yeah. it he was the nicest guy you know yeah that's anyway. emasculating mm-hmm. <laughs> that's emasculating you know don't tell me about a woman <laughs> like a a film with a strong female cast that's hilarious you know it's what like, a wimp what yeah. a wimp <laughs> so, yeah, come on uh but we digress uh so to get back so tom felton in this article talks about uh, to get ready to shoot it because he actually plays Earl Morris. Tom Felton is in the movie as well as produces. Oh, wow. The movie. Wow. Yeah. See, that's like me. You have to produce your own stuff to get a job. Right. Right. I'm with him. I'm with him. <laughs> Just make the Way whole to go thing. Draco. <laughs> yeah. To the tripod. I'm the Geico caveman doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah. It's right up there. Yep. A little so, smaller, uh, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, he said that to get ready for the shoot, that he and Abigail Lowry went on a archaeological boot camp to where they Mm. could kind of learn what they what it was like on the dig and everything. And I was kind of impressed about that because they were like Mm. trying to make it authentic, even though the way people do digs now are definitely different than the way that they did 
digs back in the 20s and 30s. But yeah. Anyway, but all this started me thinking about like how archaeologists are portrayed in film and television. And and ultimately it it leads to Indiana Jones, who yeah. is arguably the most famous archaeologist in the world, but who Without it. never existed. Never existed. Never existed. Never existed. And uh and 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 really uh you know took a lot of artifacts from their home countries <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> without exactly. asking, with no permission. Right. Right. And, uh, took them home and, you know, sold yeah. them to the museum. You know, there's sold a whole scene the <laughs> where he's trying to sell them. Marcus, I had it in my hands, Marcus. And then he's like <laughs> trying to sell. Them. These are good, aren't they? You know. Uh, so and then that kind of led me to like questions about like, what's the importance of studying archaeology? And what purpose does archaeology serve in contemporary society or contemporary culture? So um, just to start off with this isn't a new question about like how archaeologists are portrayed in film or media and in 1949 alfred kidder who we talked about before he he wrote that in popular belief there are two types of archaeologists there's the hairy chested archaeologist <laughs> And the hairy chinned archaeologist. <laughs> so, That's awesome. So, yeah, no, so it's true. Brilliant. So it's like the hairy chested one in the movies or in the, he says it's mostly in uh, comics. You know, at that time you were looking at the Sunday papers or whatever. But he said right. usually the hairy chested type are the ones they have the gun and they have the hat and their shirts yeah. undone, you know. Right. He's hacking his way through a jungle trying to find some, uh, artifact or something some trinket that he's going to, to raid you know and uh which is kind of sounds a lot like indiana jones it sure really. does harry chest i put him in the harry chested column absolutely and then the, the harry chinned archaeologist are they're mostly like the bumbling kind mm-hmm. of like old prof you know professor mm-hmm. he's you know well, i have that bone somewhere did <laughs> yeah I, exactly. where did i drop that <laughs> Absent-minded, yeah, 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 and his—he's always like the father of a really beautiful woman, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> sort of like the guy who was the owner of Jurassic Park. Yeah, uh, you know that kind of a deal. <laughs> yeah, he's he's rich, he's bumbling, he's smart, and he deciphers something. You know, Kidder says he deciphers something that's important to the story right before his assistant, the handsome guy. Saves the daughter or something, you know. Uh-huh, so, exactly. Uh, so, uh, so it's not, it's nothing new. I mean, that was Kidder wrote that in 1949, and people are That's still amazing. really having the same discussions, if not arguments, about uh, how archaeologists are portrayed. And so, I don't know. Just to start out with, how do you how do you feel about Indiana Jones? Well. I don't know. I mean, he's locked in Spielberg. You know, I'm, I've been Spielberg, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm that generation that just got, you know, hammered by those guys, his, you know, the Godfather, Star Wars, uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, Indiana Jones and E.T. And, uh, you know, I, I, yeah. I was just yeah. indoctrinated to that stuff. So I... I don't know. I mean, I, yeah, I, I feel like things were whitewashed. Spielberg, <laughs> I you know. It, whenever you talk about this, by the way, people always go, well, what about Schindler's List? Okay, I, I grant yeah, this Schindler's yeah. List, but come on. Let's, uh, you know, but. Um, did yeah, you see it I when mean, when it first came out? Did you see the first one back? Yes, in, yes, yeah. I did. And and I have to say, like Star Wars, the archetype, the Jungian uh, core to all of it has has played a big part in my life as a man, you know. Really? The, the oh sure. In um uh, I, which one was it? Uh, the 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 choose wisely. The um, oh yeah, one? damn. Uh, the last the, one that was in the last or no, that was second to the last one because I remember yeah. with another one years. The later, chalice but, and yeah. uh, yeah, and then he, you know, he, as he's trying to get the chalice, he um he he there's the leap of faith. I don't know if you remember this. Yeah, he, one yeah. of the things he has to do is the <clears throat> leap of faith. And he just has to leap on. And then you find out after he's landed that it was actually just a optical illusion. There was a place. Right. He, I mean, that to me is a, a core element to what sort of my own spiritual path is, is that, 
you know, do you think you would have you, leaped? Would you have leaped? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, no, I don't, I don't leap. No, I, I wouldn't a, have leaped, but I'd be down on my hands and knees, kind of like feeling out there. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'd be like, hold knees. on a minute, I'm not just gonna <laughs> leap, but uh, but yeah, but so yes, I, it's hard for me to separate from all of that, but you know, I loved those movies, I, yeah. I loved them, and and they yeah. keep going. There's like the librarian, there's the uh. Oh my God! There's so, you know there's so many uh, offshoots from that right. that rig, right. mm-hmm. yeah, and it's but basically yeah, I, yeah like the same story just told many times. You just many, many replace times. the archaeologist, you know, and we're fascinated by it. We're fascinated yeah. by it. You know, uh, what what do you call it? Uh, Journey to the center of the earth. You know, yeah. it's like a, like falls in all of that. Oh too, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Star- Stargate is another one that they always Stargate. Make Started Absolutely. head an archaeologist. Yeah. Geniuses. Um, I always, to me, it's like, I remember seeing the movies when I was a kid, very right when it came out. I remember some friends of mine picked me up uh, and like, hey, we're going to go see this new movie called uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know, I was like 14 or whatever. Yeah. And I remember we were all blown away by it. We thought that was the most amazing thing. Uh-huh. But I feel like it's one of those, you know, there's certain books and certain movies that you have to see at different times in your life. And to kind of see how your perspective on the movie has changed. You know, another yes. one is, uh, as far as books go, like Catcher in the Rye. <laughs> like, yes. I always remember when you're young, you're like, oh, yeah, those phonies, give it to the phonies. Right. And then you yeah. you read back and it's like, dude. Yeah. it's oh, well, We were talking about that with them. Um, uh, um, Oh, uh, C- Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah, we were Cuckoo's talking Nest about Cuckoo's Nest. The first yeah. time you read it, you're like, "Yeah, screw the the machine." Yeah. And then, and then you read it the second time, you're like, "Oh my god, he's really <laughs> disturbed. This guy needs, you know what I mean?" <laughs> yeah. So I kind of uh, <clears throat> the Indiana Jones movies. I kind of feel are the same way in a yeah. sense. I mean, not like Catcher in the Rye or <laughs> Cuckoo's Nest, no. but you no. have to see them again. And yes. Uh, and, you know, and for the people who I love the Indiana, I'll, I'll tell you, I love the Indiana Jones movies. But just because you love something doesn't mean you can't look at it again critically. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's yes. like I, I, I love myself, well, yeah. but I was in therapy for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, <laughs> well I, I just recently watched it, too, with my son, uh, which was interesting. And I thought he would love it. And he was like, mm, he, he wasn't it didn't have, it didn't get him. Isn't he, that it, funny? It, yeah, yeah. Star Isn't Wars he, he liked, but not as much. And he and he looks back at Star Wars as I think with more clear eyes than I do of like, you know, maybe there were two good movies out of nine, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the other seven, not so great. What do yeah. you think? Was it the was it the story or was it just the special effects or something? Or <sighs> it could be could be any of that, you know, could be just yeah. I don't know. It just didn't capture him the way it did us. Right, you know, right. We it's saw it on TV too, so we didn't see it in a film, in a theater. I don't so. know if that would make any. Di- Do you think that would have made any difference? Yeah, I don't. Who knows? He hated yeah. the last <clears throat> one. He thought this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Which, the one which, where the, he takes the heart out of a guy. I forgot that one. Whatever that one is. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh no, yeah. not, not that. No, it's the second one. The last yeah. one, Temple of Doom. He hated yeah. Temple of Doom. He really? was like, "This is so, stupid." We didn't even get past the first act. So you made him watch it. You're like, oh, if you hated that one, I'm going to keep watching them until you love them. I've got Temple of Doom where you're not going out anywhere this weekend. You're staying here. <laughs> don't you say you love them. So, I, I mean, that, but that's kind of like a lot of archaeology. Like some archaeologists love Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. And they say, well, you know, he creates uh, excitement in archaeology. He gets people interested in archaeology. Yeah. And probably in the last 40 years, probably a lot, at least men who go into archaeology are probably like in the back of their mind. Like, I'm like Indiana Jones. You know, I got, <laughs> I got the whip, you know, I, I maybe <laughs> study <laughs> you know, Cal Berkeley or something. But, you know, I'm like Indiana <laughs> Jones. And uh and they, they say that kind of goes back to this whole excitement for buried treasure. Like for some reason, yes. there's something in this that we love buried treasure. Yes. And uh, 
you know, I to me, I think about like uh, when Howard Carter, who the guy who excavated King Tut's tomb, you know, there's that famous line where uh, Lord Carnarvon, who was his benefactor, was standing behind him right when they opened the tomb. And Carnar- Carnarvon says, can you see anything? And Carter says, uh, yes, wonderful things. So yeah, and it's kind of like we all have that. We want to find buried treasure. Mm -hmm. And did you hear about there was a guy here in New Mexico who buried a treasure or like a treasure box? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it was found, but there's still um, there's still a lot of hoopla around it, even though they found it. There's this huge following about how 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 it was found and, and what clues were used. And yeah, the hoopla. It's and like it's a mad, a- mad, 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 mad yeah. world. You remember that exactly. movie? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. People were going crazy. They were tearing up like things at the side of the road. People were dying trying to find this thing. Jesus. Uh, there's something we we love finding buried treasure. <laughs> we yeah. We as humans love to see that. And uh, I even read somewhere, I think it was in this Earl Morris Southwestern Archaeology book about how the archaeologists, when they'd invite investors out, they would always kind of set up something to be found when the investors were there, which is pretty smart. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I yeah. I can relate to that. Yeah, everybody yeah. does that, you know. Yeah, yeah. Just let them see something. <laughs> it's just like, go go put this projectile point over there. And then when, you know, <laughs> Oh, look what I found. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, oh, wow. You know, I'd have to keep dropping it near the investor until they find it. Um, but what was interesting is Harrison Ford in 2008 was actually, he was elected to the board of the archeological Institute of America. No way. Yeah. yeah like in a yeah. real position. Like well, on the board, kidding. on the board member what to the archaeological archaeological institute of America. Oh my god, is that just to raise money? Like, what was that about? Like, he they, doesn't know anything. No, no, he was just. I, I can't remember what his speech was, but it was something like archaeology is good. Yeah, <laughs> it's just. Like, <laughs> and and he received the first Bandolier Award for raising public awareness of archaeology. And the ba- bandolier was like, you know, he was like another big name in Southwestern archaeology. But it's like... Damn. So people have taken... I mean, they they honored him with it. And they, I think well, people... I'm on the Wild West uh, <laughs> Hall of Fame. Are you I really? If you knew. I am. I have it. Wait, I have oh, a plaque great. here somewhere. I thought you knew. That. <laughs> yeah. No, no. City. I'm an honorary sheriff or marshal in Dodge City. Really? Yes. That's yes, I am. Are you like? Uh, do you ever flash that thing? <laughs> do no, they give you a I badge? Or... It. I've lost it. It's around here somewhere. <laughs> I thought you do like Elvis or something. You get pulled over, and you're like, hey, I'm a, uh, I'm an honorary sheriff, and uh... <laughs> you're under arrest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, and then they talk about. Uh, the other thing, some archaeologists love the idea of it, it's a fantasy of the rugged, heroic archaeologist, the cowboy of the science community. <laughs> they like to see themselves, yeah. and uh, you know, their really hands dirty, right? And they like we go in and we just we do what needs to be done to you know mm-hmm. explain history or whatever, and uh, and really. Probably the real cowboys of archaeology now are your contract archaeologists, who are the people who, you know, they're building a road or a building and then they uh, uncover some bones or something. And then the contract archaeologists are like the hired guns that are called in to come in and just as quickly as possible catalog that thing, you know, take get photos it of it, get wow, it out of there. Really? Yeah. So they're, and, uh, wow, they're like the mercenaries. Like, no, they not. Yeah, they're like the ones that, I mean, those are your working, if, if you have academic archaeologists, yeah, and then you have your contract archaeologists, who are the ones wow. that are called out all the time. Wow. To just pull that stuff out and see, and just say, basically, is it important to preserve this, or can we continue on, you know? Mm. And, and a lot of this stuff is- what the answer is a lot. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you. Pave over it. <laughs> 
there are warehouses like at Indiana Joe. There are warehouses full of like pottery shards and, and everything else, uh, you know, of just things that have been pulled out of like in New Mexico. You can't barely build anything without finding some. It's you know, true. I was walking around with you and you saw a, a piece of uh, yeah. sh- a shard and picked it. Oh, here's one. I'm like, what? Yeah. You're like, yeah. 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 So, so you have to like, they come in and they, they catalog it, kind of look at it, analyze it and say, yeah, we need to preserve it. No, we don't continue on with the project or whatever. And to me, those are really the, the cowboys, you know, yeah. <laughs> the ones that yeah. are doing most of the work nowadays. And they, they go off and, you know, they're called into different parts of the country. They fly in, they do their work, or maybe they're working for the state and the state sends them out, you know, and a small crew gets together kind of, I don't know, like wildcats or something. Yeah, like there putting them back it. together. <laughs> Charlie, we need you. Yeah. Bring your brush. <laughs> it's just goes out there. I haven't I haven't brushed off a site in years. You know, <laughs> like He's the best duster that I've ever had. <laughs> Get, Get him. him. Find him. I don't care where he is. <laughs> Get him Helicopter. out here. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> just like in Predator when Schwarzenegger yeah. puts that team together. <laughs> so, uh, and then there's other archaeologists who hate Indiana Jones, <laughs> who just are completely offended by his representation and just don't like him. And you've kind of touched on it already. A lot of people say, you know, he's nothing but a pot hunter. He's just out mm-hmm. there like looting sites. Yeah. It. Which is a big part of what archaeology was. I mean, if you look at Egypt, there was a lot, a lot of horrible <clears> stuff done that, there, yeah. and and a lot of things that are in uh, just recently in the uh, in the paper. Uh, the how uh, Gr- I think it's Greece, or, uh, Rome is is wanting work back from France. Is it France that has it, or maybe it's England <clears> that has it and won't return yeah. it? Or you know, there's all all that stuff where people just. I mean, Hitler did that. He just looted places and took all their stuff. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. There's it's, but, it's a big part of it. It's connected to archaeology, unfortunately. Yeah, it Especially was kind of bad. What happened in <clears throat> Egypt? Because wasn't Egypt just so much about the gold, so much about the jewels? Yeah, yeah. And it was. I mean, it started early, like in the 1800s. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was some guy. I think his name was Beltzoni, who was a, a circus strongman. <laughs> he was a circus strongman, started his career in a circus, and then ended up just being basically a looter of artifacts in Egypt. Wow. And he would sell them to collectors. But yeah, that was like early 1800s. They were just like looting gold all, and objects. All that stuff sat there for centuries and centuries and centuries. <laughs> and then a carnival strongman comes in and pries it open. <laughs> It yeah. just immediately plucks the ruby right off the, you know, the yeah. the crown of the of the mummy. Yeah, I mean, it's like they had been there. For, some of those uh, remains had been there for thirty five hundred years, you know. Damn. And, and so people had already looted them, but they never could. Sometimes they couldn't get all the way in to loot everything, mm-hmm. or they just looted some things. Um, I think you were talking about it's the Elgin marbles or whatever that some British guy. Yes. Took them off of the Parthenon and yes. shipped them back to England. And right. now Greece for like the last 60 years has been saying, hey, we want those Elgin marbles back yeah. because we you never said it was back okay. on the building you pried them off of. Right. Right. And what he and says it's, is, all, uh, it's always I mean, under he, the guise of we had to protect it for them because right. uh, you hear a lot right. of that from Iraq, a lot of stuff that was taken out of Iraq. Yeah. No, it's it's true. It's like. uh well, it's got to, and Indiana Jones says that it belongs in a museum. <laughs> you know, well, it's like uh, <laughs> you're looting it for the museum. You know what I mean? Maybe the people who produced it don't want to let it go. You know, <laughs> maybe um, it belongs to where they want it to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, another thing people say is, well, Indiana Jones is not a realistic representation of what archaeologists do. <laughs> Come on. Who's making that <laughs> argument? No, duh. Yeah. I mean, the guy had a whip. Yeah. I mean, he had a giant ball chasing him. I mean, seriously, you you worried that we're going to – how stupid are the yeah. rest of us? That's an insult to the rest of us. <laughs> 
Yeah, I would say, you know, ultimately, it is a movie. <laughs> Let's not forget. Yeah, like, so nobody wants on. to see, like, Dr. Jones, like, grading papers or something. You know what I mean? It's like arguing with other staff members about their offices. I'm merging a database. <laughs> So, I mean, it's like, come on, cut him a break. But anyway, they say, well, you know, he doesn't really, uh, we don't see him doing any excavation, really. I mean, yeah, yeah he'll he'll dig, but no, he it's takes not like. The, he takes the rock off and puts a, ba- a bag of sand <laughs> uh, where, in its place. What about that? I, I always love uh, whenever he, uh, like, takes a big wooden cover off of a tomb or something, he just throws it to the side, you know, it's just like. <laughs> That was yeah, maybe we better draw that or something. <laughs> yeah, hold on to that. <laughs> In several movies, it's just like, throw that out of the way. Give me that art. <laughs> Let's not worry about the context. I mean, context is everything in archaeology. It's like, he's not worried about the context. Just get that thing back to Marcus in the museum. You know? Uh and then uh, the other thing people, they say, well, all of these movies play up to pseudo-archaeology and alternative history. Oh, is- come on. <laughs> you mean like when the, I'm supposed they're going to be referring to the Ark melting the Nazis' face now? <laughs> yeah. That <Okay>. might be... <laughs> 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 that might be uh, one example of pseudo archaeology <laughs> or alternative history, I guess. Really? I, so the your ne- next <clears throat> thing you're going to say is that the uh, that that the the cup of 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 Jesus doesn't give you everlasting life? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Look, I'm, this is just what people say. This is not Everybody what I'm saying. Everybody to their own. H to their own. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, it, they kind of say, well, you know, they always play up to uh, like ancient aliens. Like it was the ancient oh. aliens that came down and, and gave us this stuff. But that stuff is so interesting. The whole Templar Knights thing and how that's connected to the Black Irish and all, yeah. what isn't isn't the isn't the the cross buried in a bottomless lake in Nova Scotia or something <laughs> like that? Didn't you tell me that? Yeah, something like that. And how it's all connected to these secret. Oh, that kind of stuff yeah. is fantastic. Jesus oh, especially Christ. for for movies. You know right? what I mean? Like I I get it. It's like, hey, it's a movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's a movie. It's you a know? movie. It's all that stuff is perfect for movies. You know what I mean? You got to have play with the alternative history or whatever to make a good story. But yeah. No. Anyway, Everybody's a complainer. Everybody's a hater. <laughs> yeah. This is making me dislike some of the some of your some of really? your uh, fellow. Yeah, I think they need to ease up. All right, ease up That's... on Indy. <clears throat> I think. Well, I'm just saying. I've read a lot of articles getting ready for this. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. So, and then we go into the cultural anthropology side of him as a. We're not even talking about him as an archaeologist anymore. Right. We're talking about him as a character. In a movie that came out in the 80s. Yes. Uh, And I've read, you know, articles, too, about talking about, well, you know, he's kind of this representation of a nostalgic American male-dominated past. Yes. You know, it's supposed to be back in the 30s, but really Mm -hmm. it was during the 80s, during Reagan. Mm -hmm. And, you know, during the Reagan time, we were all like, we're going to recapture the greatness of America. You know. We did it. We did it all right. <laughs> yeah, I remember living through that time. It wasn't so great. You know? Yeah, it wasn't. wasn't everything. Uh, I just remember how speedy the cocaine was. That's the only thing I can remember. Buzz through that decade. Buzz through that decade well, onto the were, 90s. They were stepping on it all over the place. <laughs> That would have been interesting, you know. Indiana Jones means Sigmund Freud, and they <laughs> snorted up. <laughs> yeah, Freud, man. You know, he got the pink stuff, Freud. <laughs> so, um, so I kind of, you know, I can see that. Like when you see him, it, it's definitely oh, yeah. like he's the American icon, the cowboy. He's got the hat. Uh, 
and then all the indigenous people in in his, in those are movies stupid are all compared to him. <laughs> yeah, stupid, all evil, idiots. swarthy. Oh, Indy, Indy. Yeah. yeah, they've all. Oh yeah. my god, that kid. Duplicitous, duplicitous. Uh, they always do. Yeah, it's so true. It's so true. Duplicitous, exactly. What about with a <clears> famous scene where the guy? you know, has this sword and does all this fancy sword stuff. Oh, yeah. And he just yeah. takes his gun out, boom, kills him and moves on. Eh, just yeah. another dead native. Get out of the way. I got stuff to yeah. do. People love that, it. though. Remember? Like, it, it's kind of like, it. uh, It's kind of like when you see kung fu movies and it's like some black belt, like seventh degree black belt, and some guy who just, he's a bar fighter. And he's uh-huh. just going to tackle me. He's going to, and we love it to see where someone that's really, spend a lot of time perfecting their craft is beat by some guy who just like <laughs> gang tackles you. You know what I mean? But it's kind of the same with Indiana Jones. Like here's a swordsman, but mm-hmm. Indiana Jones is just going to shoot him or kill him. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then the other thing is the sexism of it all, <laughs> which, uh, every yeah, woman, I, every, every leading lady he has to save. And they're always in a silky dress. The whole, the whole movie, with all that dirt. Yeah. God, that's gotta yeah. hurt. I always feel bad. I can't remember the actress's name who was in the the Raiders of the Lost Ark, but she had to do a lot of crawling in a thin silk dress. I remember. Yeah, yeah. And I remember thinking, God, your knees. I hope they put knee pads on her underneath those uh, that dress. That right. must have hurt like hell. Right, and there, there's, there's kind of. I mean, people have talked about, um, you know, his rel- Marion. Remember Marion? Marion. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And in that first one, his relationship with Mary, it's kind of weird. I mean, now you watch it, it's a little creepy at times because mm-hmm. he goes to find Marion and Marion is all mad at him and says, you run my life. I was just a child or something like that. Yeah. It gets Jesus. really weird. Yeah. And, and he still treats her like it's supposed to be this romantic story, but yet he still treats her like a little kid and like a, like a, like a kid's sister or something. Like there's no real sexual yeah. tension to it i i found it looking back at it older looking at it maybe yeah it like teenage and then it something. shifts well and 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 the, the weird thing about that scene too is she drinks she's drinking she you know the first time you meet her she's out drinking all of these uh ruffians right and then immediately right. goes stone cold sober when the nazis yeah. walk in uh she's yeah. it's, she was never that always that always bugged me and then the other weird thing about temple of the doom is you know uh, you, you know, he's making out with her through the whole thing, you know, and that Spielberg yeah. married her. Didn't he? I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Been that doesn't weird. seem, I, the whole sex tension in that one, that Temple of Doom, I'm, I'm sorry, but it just, I didn't get it. I didn't no. get it at all. Mm-hmm. Like it's, no. it's not seething or anything. And, and we're Mary having watched witty it. repartee where they don't like each other and they just, you know, I didn't like yeah. either of them. Yeah. I was, Mary and I were talking about it and I was asking her, like, do you find it? Like, does this seem hot? <laughs> you know, like, something, do you want me to be more like Indy or, you know, it's like, I don't know. But, uh, and though we were both saying like, it's very awkward. Like the sexual scenes in these movies are very awkward. And yeah, you're right. I read one article where it was like, what's interesting is the character Belloc, who's supposed to be the evil guy. Right. Uh, but Belloc, you notice, speaks the indigenous language. Right. <laughs> he blends in. People seem to, the people from the indigenous culture seem to like Belloc. Right. And then Belloc actually treats Marion like a woman. Remember, he gives her the like the dress and like treats right. her as an adult rather than like a kid sister or something. So That's somebody was right. saying, you know. That's right. But. Um, mm, Belloc. So anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, remember, I kind of felt bad because you kind of like, well. You know, Bill, like he, it wasn't so bad. Like somebody liked him, you know, it's like <laughs> compared to Indy. You know what I noticed last time I watched it? Alfred Molina's in that movie. And he? Oh, he's the bad guy, right? At the very he's, beginning, he's the guy who's like, throw me the idol. I'll throw you the uh, Oh whip my God, some. that's right. Yeah. That's yeah. God, Molina, man. That guy's done everything. I know. that to Spider-Man. <laughs> what a career uh, i know i know but i was shocked to see it it was like wow okay um so give a little so i tried to look into just how the films themselves came about and apparently what 
the story is, is Spielberg always wanted to do a James Bond movie. Mm. And, and what happened is Cubby Broccoli and all the Broccoli's who controlled the James Bond franchise would never give him a James Bond film. Interesting. I wonder why. He's yeah, I, kind of sexless. You know, yeah. I think he, I think they made the right decision. Yeah. Because it, it's your comment about you and Mary looking at that relationship. He doesn't, there's something, uh, yeah, I, I think the Broccoli's did the right thing. Yeah. It, I think they sense that because no matter what you say, I mean, come on, James Bond, <laughs> especially the ones from the 60s and 70s aren't uh, – any like mm-hmm. equality icons no. or something, you know, no, they don't, they don't hold up. <laughs> they do not hold up. No, but, but the thing is they did have sexuality. I mean, there was sexuality I, in them. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think Cubby Broccoli must've looked at like Spielberg or something. Be like, yeah. You look at E.T. Cool. and you're like, wait a minute, what are we doing? No. Goonies. Goonies. Yeah. Which I love Which all are, of those movies. Yeah. They're Goonies, just not, yeah. Put some cheese on my broccoli and tell them no. Uh, good night. No, but the Italians, they know. They know. Yeah. No, he doesn't have it. Yeah. No. And it, and apparently it's like throughout the movies, other movies, uh, Spielberg was always making like little hints to, uh, to 007. Or to James Bond movies. And so it's like, I, I don't know if I, I can't remember the scene or whatever, but I, somebody said, well, in Jaws, when they pull out that license plate from the Jaws's belly or so from the shark's belly, it says 007 on it. Or, oh. And the whole thing when they got Sean Connery to be in the, in the movie, in the uh, yes. last Temple Crusade. Temple of the or Lost, Do- or not t- Last Crusade, yes. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I get it. Like he wanted it. And then apparently like George Lucas said, well, you know, I got this one character. He's, he's like, uh, James Bond only is an archeologist or something. And that's how they came up with, uh, Interesting. uh, Indiana Jones. But I also read somebody said, you know, uh, <clears throat> Indiana Jones is James Bond without the savoir faire. <laughs> so, you know, I've kind of yeah. like, he's missing, all of he's, that. He's the American version. He's the right. kind of the crass, just cowboy with <clears> no <throat> flair. No, no. Um, yeah. He, he, he has no style. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we can look at some of the themes in Indiana Jones real, real quick. Um, but first of all, I just want to say all of them use what Alfred Hitchcock called the MacGuffin. And mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure if you've ever heard, have you heard? I that have term? heard of the MacGuffin. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm familiar. So the MacGuffin and correct me if I'm wrong, John, apparently it's it's just something people are searching for that right. leads the, uh, it just drives the story. Yeah. The, uh, what's the famous one? The, 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 the Eagle, the, the, uh, Maltese Falcon. Was, Maltese, Maltese Falcon. Falcon. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And then you like uh Repo Man, remember there was that there was the car with aliens in the back seat or something uh-huh. or uh, yeah. uh pulp fiction, there was that box with something that glowed in it. I mean, these uh-huh. are all MacGuffins. They just drive. Yeah. We don't know what they are, and in fact you don't really want to know what they are because right. <laughs> it'll right. ruin the story, you know. Um, so some of the themes in Indiana Jones, uh kind of like George Lucas's influence i think it's just this very simple good versus evil yes yes very and joseph so, campbell there's a lot of joseph campbell Jungian archetype stuff going on there that that you know he loved yeah that, and you have like in star wars the dark side the light mm-hmm. or whatever i mean it's very cut and dry there's no yes. gray in there you know right. what i mean and so in Indiana Jones, you again, we've kind of talked about it. you have the good archaeologist who's like looting, basically looting these things for museums. And then the bad archaeologist who uh, who's out there trying to loot these things for private collectors or something. Right. And and then now, in hindsight, we'd probably like we've already discussed, say, hey, those are both looting, <laughs> yeah. you know. Right. Right. And in. uh 1990, we they they passed the Native American Graves Protection Act, NAGPRA, which was like when we started to take all of these remains, all of these museums in the eastern United States and 
across the country had all of these Indian remains or American mm-hmm. Indian remains. And so it was like, we're trying to repatriate these remains back to where they belong and also rep- repatriate these artifacts because it's, mm-hmm. it's like, you know, what do you need? I mean, I would feel bad as well. Like if somebody came in and like dug up my, my mom's body and then took it to a museum somewhere and just held on to it forever. <laughs> you know what I mean? I agree. I, I was just in Austria and uh, hmm. we I, I explored the catac. I went on a tour of the catacombs oh, did you? underneath did you? A, uh, a, a cathedral built in 1100. Wow. And it was wow. just thousands and thousands of bones. And af- at first you're like, wow, this is so amazing. And it's and then you start to realize, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> These are just human beings here that we're all just looking at. It's yeah. so crass. There was something so I don't know. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't a great feeling. Did you? Uh, did you come out of that with a sense of your own mortality or something, or was it? Yeah, any- and, and 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 also you, you just the the sheer volume of people who've died. And and that's just one little. You just think about the number of bones, human bones, that have been on the on the planet. Yeah. My yeah. God, that's what they talk about. Uh, I've read places or in certain places where uh, there were so many mummies in Egypt. I mean, we're talking thousands of years of people dying and being mummified that they mm-hmm. would use them to to like for fires. For example, <laughs> they would just burn <laughs> mummies. <laughs> to, to stay warm, for example. Wow. I mean, wow. it's just um, yeah, whole different context of like ah, it's just a mummy, another mummy. You know, just- well, they ran out of room underneath the cathedral, so they started stacking the bones and making walls out of the bones, and then filling, making like little rooms out of the bones, and then filling the rooms with bones, and and then you know, mixing everybody's bones together, but you would put the heart or some of the organs in yeah. special vessels for people who were super fancy, uh, just because wow. they ran out of room. They just didn't have anywhere else to put them. Did they let you take photos down there or was that? No, like no thank photo? God. One yeah. guy did and I, and and they caught him, which was kind of just so like, dude. Just yeah. Hold Make it deleted where they like, you got to delete I, that. I hope so. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid of authority. So I just yeah. walked away, <laughs> especially in Austria, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> Baby, I'm here, and, I'm here and I'm um, So uh, another theme, of course, is we've talked about the American international hero. Again, he's supposed to be our James Bond. So somehow mm-hmm. Indiana Jones is out there saving the world for, Every America, day. I guess, mm-hmm. even though I don't know what that little <laughs> golden amulet or our golden shrine would have done for <laughs> for American democracy, but okay. In the All wrong right. hands. In the <laughs> wrong hands, it could be used as a weapon. And the Ark and the, uh, I don't know, the Grail. The Grail, too, would have made you everything You can't different. have Hitler. Hitler can't have anything. you gotta keep, <laughs> got to keep it out of Hitler's hands. Listen, I'm going to tell you, you would not have an oil shortage in the seventies, if if India had brought that Grail home, no <laughs> shit, <laughs> got that right. Solved everything. Solved everything mm-hmm. for us. Um, and then they kind of they talk about well, you know, you have the and this is typical of a lot of movies of like the American archaeologist is all fists. He's out mm-hmm. there solving problems with his fists and his whip, and mm. whereas the English archaeologists are always they're kind of solving problems with their brain, you know, kind of more, <laughs> I guess I, the implication, I guess, is being more feet. I yeah. guess. Is. Well, after being American in Europe, that's true. We're, we're you think idiots. So? I, yeah. I think Europeans are smarter to us overall. They've got, they've got a, a, a more, uh, they're just more um, uh, flexible in their thinking. You know, did you, uh, was there anything? Well, we'll have to do a, a show just about culture shock. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. talk about your experiences. Okay. Yeah, so. absolutely. That sounds great. Um, and then finally, the we have, uh, and again, I think this is both for Spielberg and Lucas, this idea of redemption of the world through a return to a more nostalgic, childlike yes. state. Yes. And, and, uh, 
and again, there's less ambiguity. There's less sexual ambiguity or ambiguity. Uh, there's less ambiguity when it comes to good and evil. Uh, Which is exactly what was happening during the time during Reagan's eighties. I mean, that was yeah. that was it. Let's let's hmm. no bones about it. This is the the Cold War is is such and such, and this is this is the way things are. You're yeah. either you're with me or against me. Well, that was later, but you know what I mean. Yeah, no, I think it was because it was like the Soviets were evil, America's good, or the West is good. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it's it, you just kind of break it down. It, it, what came out of that time period is like, um, I mean, Star Wars was a little bit earlier than that, but definitely Indiana Jones is a project of the 80s. Mm-hmm. And it's just very simple. You know, like mm-hmm. you, you don't worry about it. This is very clear that like there's mm-hmm. good people archaeologist and there's bad people archaeologists <laughs> you know <laughs> so um so kind of moving on how, the movies you we've kind of discussed already the movies uh how do you feel about them now like you just watch them with your son do you still still like them or do you I mean, I, 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 you know what? I'm so easy. Like I always say, like, look, you could turn a lightsaber, you could film a lightsaber being turned on and set on a table for two hours and I'd pay 14 bucks to go see it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, and so yeah. I know that the star, star, that seven of those movies are not good at all or, yeah. or have issues. <laughs> Jar Jar Binks in. Yeah. Let's put it yeah. that way. Um, but God, it's such a, I mean, it brings up, it's like a smell. It brings up so many other memories and so many other things that it's very, very difficult for me to separate it out and to look at it truly. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, I do think structurally that first movie, pretty darn good, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. it, it, it was set up. It was just a little engine that worked pop, pop movie, you know, typical Spielberg. Yeah pop sensation it's like it's like sort of appreciating uh michael jackson well until we learned more about yeah. him but you know appreciating <laughs> that you know it's like wow or the beatles you know jesus right. they could make pop songs that were solid um and i know beatle fans now are gonna hit us oh they were much more than that but <laughs> I, you know yeah um yeah, yeah that, that, that so that's how i feel about it i i do and i do enjoy it i i but i I think I'm thinking about seeing it with my brother, like what you said, you yeah. know, going, you know, yeah, that memory of going to, uh, what was that theater? Uh, Glendale, Glen, Glenwood, 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 Glenwood. Yeah. yeah, where we grew up. And I remember going to Star Wars, and it was the line was wrapped around the block. You had to stand in line to get your ticket. <laughs> Did I ever tell you? Uh, when I 1977, my mom would go to work really early. And so a friend of mine and I wanted to go see Star Wars. So we had my mom drop us off first thing in the morning. Like the first movie wasn't until like 2.30. We had her drop us off at like 6 in the morning. And we sat outside Glenwood for, for like eight hours till about 2. And I, then I, I bet was you like, weren't the first people either. Were there other people when you, sh- no, when you we, showed No, we up? were the first. You were, we were the first. The first. <laughs> but well, I was like, I got to go to the bathroom. I got to go to the bathroom. And and it was at the gas station across the street. I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm we got to run over there. So we both ran over to use the bathroom after sitting out there for eight and a half hours. We came back. There was a line around the building. No, <laughs> yeah. well, I didn't want to you stay. What the fuck? You should have called me. <laughs> we both, God we, damn it. We, we both had to go. <laughs> Why? Well, one of you has to stay. <laughs> God damn. Eight hours, first in line. We were like, this is it. And I just remember that. You know, it taught me a, a lesson. It's just like you're fucked. Don't no get out of don't get out of line. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just do what everybody else does and take the seat they give you. Yeah. 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 Uh so anyway, uh, I'm kind of the same way. I I love the movies, but looking back on them now, uh there's things that really bother me about them, about the character. Mm. Uh, I also find, you know, it's like, okay, the, so the character, just from a character standpoint, and maybe I'm being too too critical of it, but it's like, okay, he's he's found the Ark, <laughs> he's found the, the Holy Grail, and yet he's still the same guy. <laughs> you know, you go back to the little college, it's still right. all a bunch of white people and one black guy in the back. 
and nothing's <laughs> changed. Like he hasn't right. learned. He hasn't like, oh, yeah. you know what? There's why don't we all love each other or something? You know what I mean? It's still <laughs> nothing. He's still kind of the same yep. same guy. And then the second one, which was supposed to be the most James Bond type one, mm. which starts with him in a tuxedo and you know, Shanghai or something back in 1935 yes. or something. And where suddenly now he can speak Mandarin and Sanskrit and everything else. <laughs> and then there's like this big fight where he punches like the cigarette girl. It's supposed to be like camp or something, but it's like, Jesus Christ, he yeah, just yeah. really punched the cigarette girl. That's probably like a traumatic brain injury and caved in yeah. her face or something, you know? And there, it's like all with like, like a dance tune or something. Yeah, and, it's all yeah, it's all choreographed. Like like yeah, there's music is still playing through all of that. Yeah, yeah, and it's just kind of like wow. And then I don't know that second one is just weird, man. That Temple of yeah. Doom to me is oh all the kid stuff. It, it's bizarro. That's bizarro. Yeah. But you also that's when Spielberg is starting to figure out the whole theme park aspect of it because or the or yeah. the video game aspect because you'll see the scene where you're like oh this is going to be in the in the yeah. in the video yeah. game right when they're in those, the, the mining cars, cars or yeah. whatever yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's kind of, I hate to say, he's kind of an asshole in that one, I thought. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? If yeah. That was supposed to be Spielberg's he's... take on James Bond. It's like, mm -hmm. I don't know, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. And then he married his own Bond girl that he I cast know. in it, which makes it even weirder. I mean, we're not yeah. shrinks, but <laughs> let's dig in here. <laughs> and then did you see the last one that... that with the skulls that came out in like 2008 or something. Yes, of course. <laughs> of course. I saw it all. Everything. Seen and, it all. And, that yeah, and now we got another one and he's going to be 80. Oh, what the hell's going to oh, happen in this one? Oh, no. Really? Yeah. They're making a new one. They're making another yeah. one. It was, mm. I felt it was stretching uh, believability in the one in 2008 where Indy, <laughs> Indy's like running around up on top of boxes and jumping around. It's like, <laughs> this is like a 70 year old man. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Ooh, but uh, how do you, who was it? Was it John Hurt in it? That like he, <laughs> John Hurt plays a guy who's lost his mind and has no lines. Remember? He's, yes. Yes, uh, jo yeah. oh, John Hurt. You know, you, you see, it's that's what's so great when you see these, like Molina. You see these amazing actors. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the, basically just a, uh, just a machine. Yeah, yeah. of like he probably was like, okay, I, if you're not gonna give me any lines, you know, give me one line or don't give me any lines. You know yeah. what I mean? He's just like, oh. I. He probably just played video games in his trailer. I mean. You know. <laughs> Doesn't have to learn anything. Yeah, it didn't have uh, to learn anything. The, the, there's a couple things that bother me about that one. Um, there is, there's like a line where Indy's being chased on a motorcycle or something. And they go through the uh, library, and some guy says, "Dr. Jones, what I'm asking about the test or something." And uh, Indy says to the the kid, "Like, oh, don't worry about that. Worry about diffusionism or something. Study diffusionism," and. It, it kind of bothered me in a sense because diffusionism is this idea of like through cultural change, uh, like cultural change only happens when like a more advanced in parentheses or, you know, quotation marks, advanced culture interacts with a less advanced culture. That's mm. what diffusionism said. So diffusionism was, um, I get it that they were trying to say it for the movie because, you know, ultimately mm. spoiler alert, uh, <laughs> alert that this whole idea was that these aliens had come down and given some culture or something to people. But, hmm. but the thing is diffusionism uh, was used to justify colonialism, like mm -hmm. going in and exploiting what, what Western Europeans consider to be uh, less advanced or primitive cultures. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm like, yeah, that's kind of, it's a throwaway line. I see where it's a scene, but yeah, that's kind of, yeah, it's pretty harsh. Yeah, like, couldn't you have picked mm -hmm. out another one, you know, just <laughs> to make the movie work? Yeah, I get it. But uh, and then the other thing that kind of bothered me was that uh, Marion Ravenwood is still <laughs> still pining, pining away for for, for Indy, Indy after everything. I know. And he's been, yeah. you know, banging women all the way across the, you know, 
Oh yeah, uh, the yeah. globe. He's like a yeah. No, what, what, there's a line in there where he's like, "There was a lot of women, but none of them were you, honey." <laughs> Something like that. You know? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> It, and I'm, to me, the most, having been raised by a single mom, I'm like, the most impressive thing is that Marion Ravenwood was able to raise a son on her own back yeah. in the 50s. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Which ain't I mean, easy. My mom no. was married and she raised two sons on her own. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess let's uh, so let's just talk about we'll sum up with some of the other representations of uh, archaeologists, and I'll just Love throw it. some out to you. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Laura Croft. Oh, fantastic video game. Frustrating as hell. Yeah, really. That video, but the water when she would jump into the water, I'd never seen water like that in a video game. I mean, that is an over sexualized, crazy <laughs> bill, uh, porn essentially. That's what that yeah. that is. That's it's 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 porn mixed with a Rubik's cube. Uh, that's what that video game, those video games. How are. do you feel about like as a man playing that when you you're playing Lara Croft, right? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I was a, I was a, um, adolescent boy when I was playing Lara Croft. And yeah. so, you know, you could, you could, Laura could look all around and there was a way to look up right at her boobs. So <laughs> I'm playing Lara looking at my own boobs getting turned on. Explain that one. And how did that, did you find, <laughs> did, did you succeed finding the, uh, Finding anything in the tomb, or was it absolutely? And now look at me. Look at look. At, obviously, I turned out great, so it didn't affect me negatively in any way. Yeah, I that, guess there, that was a bizarre. Did you, bizarre. Did you see the movie? Did you see the movie yes, with Angelina yes, Jolie? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, my God. Apparently, they're getting ready to do another one with uh, Phoebe Waller Bridge or whatever is going to write Who's a that? new Laura. I think she did Fleabag. Oh, really? Right? Or, oh, she's going to write it. They're doing Whoa. a new Laura Croft. Okay, so. that could. Uh, all right, I'm interested in that. Um, another one that kind of leads us to like another uh, representation of female archaeologists in the movies is. It's it's a subcategory of the sexy librarian <laughs> where mm, it's like, yes, you know, she's like with the glasses on, like looking at the mm -hmm. uh, microscope or like, you know, looking at the, the pottery shirts and then, you know, she, the, the spirit takes over. And of course, she takes the glasses off and the hair comes down. My God, you're else. beautiful, Mrs. Jensen, <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Have you ever seen the movie Pimpernel Smith? No. Pimpernel like Smith came out, yeah, came out in 1941. Hmm. Uh, it was by Leslie Howard, who had played, uh, who was it? Uh, Naked Gun. No, no, not Leslie Howard. He, <laughs> <laughs> who was that? Leslie Nielsen or something, right? Oh, right. Damn it. Le he, he played uh, Wilkes, the guy in uh, Gone with the Wind. The, the oh, okay. Yeah. Wow, um, he was an English act actor. Handsome. Yeah. And he, uh, it came out in 1941 during the war, but he played, it was kind of like a twist on the Scarlet Pimpernel where he mm. played an archeologist that would go to Europe before the war and help smuggle people out away from the Nazis. Interesting. So, yeah. Schindler's list before Schindler's list. Right. Or even, uh, I guess you could say like Indiana Jones fighting Nazis before before Indiana found. Yeah, I like that. What's it called again? Pimpernel Smith. It's it's All a right, slow we'll, one. <laughs> it's a oh slow really? One. Yeah. Well, we'll put the link in the in the in, in at the bottom in in yeah. our comments. Yeah, it's on the YouTube's. You can watch it for free. <laughs> but uh, I, and then uh, sadly, I mean, this was during the war, so he's making a a movie about the war. Wow, during, during the, the war. war. Mm -hmm. And then Leslie Howard was shot down by the Nazis, uh, like in 1943 or something. He was wow, he uh, was a pilot. No, he was no, he was on a plane. Not to oh. laugh about it, he was on a plane flying from like Portugal to England, 
and he was outside the war zone or something. I guess they had agreed upon some area that, you know, okay, if we're outside here, that's just a passenger flight. But the Nazis went ahead and shot it down. Shot it down. Wow. So, yeah. So, uh, but it's kind of interesting. He plays the, well, the Pimpernel Smith, I mean, the Pimper, Charlotte Pimpernel, you know, is kind of plays this absent minded guy. That's his, his, uh, that's his disguise. Right. And so Pimpernel Smith is kind of the same way. Everybody's, oh, that old archaeologist can't remember anything, mm-hmm. you know, and, and really he's smuggling people out. That's so. like me. I, I play dumb, but I'm really, <laughs> you have no idea what's going on. <laughs> You're playing chess. The rest of us uh, are just playing checkers. You know that's what I mean? Right. That's right. <laughs> uh, speaking of you, I'll, I'll put up the other one. I have another one on the list. John Henry Hoyle. Oh, my who, God. Who was an intellectual action hero as well. And I'd like to know how you balance that. Well, uh... I thought it was, I, you know, we were just juxtaposing things because that's funny when you do that. Yeah. So an <laughs> idiot who's, who's a genius, book smart and street dumb. That's, that's what he was at his core. He was a Harvard graduate who had very poor social sense and uh, was a braggart like all Harvard grads are, uh, would let people know he went to Harvard, you know, without yeah. them even asking, which is what. Most Harvard grads, you know, do, as we all know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, yeah, that was fun. That was a really great role. Really. Did great. you do your own stunts through it as well? Was it? I <clears throat> did a few, but no. There, there was, as we got more money and the stunts got more advanced, uh, I <laughs> suddenly a, 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 a a uh, stunt guy g- would show up who looked like me, but <laughs> five times more handsome. <laughs> and he would just be smoking a cigarette, just talking yeah. to somebody yeah. and then, huh, you ready? Put the cigarette out. And he would do the stunt the first time, every time. Really? Yes. Because apparently they only get paid once, whether it takes five times or one time. Oh my God. It. Yeah. Oh my God. So they, he just would do it. I remember he had to <laughs> jump through a, a window, smash through a window, do a shoulder roll and then, and then uh, step up and fire a gun. And then after that, they were like, cut. All right, everybody freeze. And then they walked a goofball actor in there. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, there you go. Wow. I, I thought yeah. you did your own stunts on that. I, I did a said. few. I did quite a few because we didn't have the money. But 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 the big yeah. ones I didn't do. I, I was on top of a stagecoach that was moving and I was being throttled by a bad guy. That was pretty good. Yeah, and I had to good. I had to ride a horse and shoot a gun, which is not easy at all. That really? is not easy. I mean, we but grew a up in Kansas. A pistol or- a yeah, pistol or pistol, a like a it was a forty five uh, Colt, poli- you know the big long ones, the seven inch yeah. barrel. It was like a big piece of metal, and then you have to gallop loping on this horse, trying to look like you knew what you were doing. That was some yeah. acting. Yeah. Did you ever? Uh, are you the type of when when you develop the character where you you thought about like what was Henry John Henry Hoyle like when he we first. <laughs> Did you go back? You mean, did I have an animal? And did I? (laughs) Did you like imagine like, Uh, what would John Henry Hoyle be like if he was like his first day of class, you know, just to kind of help fill out your character? No, no, no. I don't do a lot of, a lot of research, uh, backstory research. (laughs) I just had to ask. What's his favorite color? What's John? Yeah, I don't was, know. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, this has been fantastic. I could go on forever. I'm going to cut it short. I'm going to, uh, I had some other stuff uh, to talk about, but we'll save it for another time because I start it, talking to been, you, John. Oh, the- a goddamn pleasure, Mr. McRae. <laughs> goddamn pleasure, as always. I, so I just hope our listeners are enjoying it one tenth as much as I am. Oh. Oh, you know, I was thinking, I've known you for over 40 years, and I mm. still enjoy talking to you. I know. Isn't that weird? That is weird. It's very strange, because I don't have that relationship with, well, anyone Yeah, uh, that I can think yeah. of. Yeah. Man. 
Yeah, we, um, we've only had one fight in our life, and it was when we were broke, hungry, in France, as I recall. <laughs> yeah. Remember that we had, yeah, we had to stay alive. It was staying alive. Yeah, I, I stole think. some croissants and, <laughs> and we went to the Louvre. Do you remember? It was like Jean Valjean. We could have ended up <laughs> Les Miserables, 1986 <laughs> or something. It was the um, best of times. It was the worst of times, <laughs> my friend. So uh, closing arguments about or closing thoughts about Indiana Jones. Yeah, I mean, the, my biggest uh, takeaway is let's all ease up. I mean, we can we can cut down uh, uh, these movies very easily, and and they're they're just pop. But you know, let's ease up on uh, on on on. They're, they were a moment in time, a blip in time, hmm. and right. uh, they they served a purpose for a bunch of teenagers who didn't have yeah. anything else to do. Yeah, I agree. I, it's I mean, it's the entertainment business. They're just meant to be there to entertain people. And yeah, it's a project of its time, like you said, it, meaning the 1980s, not the 1930s. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, no, the 80s. Yeah. Just the pop of it all. The pop, the popcorn butter of it all is, they don't yeah. make, they, 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 I guess the Marvel things are like that now, but not really. Yeah. It doesn't have the same vibe at all. Yeah. The Marvel and, and things I think, feel more like a, like amusement park rides. This this felt right. more like um, fancy B movies. You know, yeah. fancy. Yeah, they were like, yeah, it was a different. It was cool. It was interesting. But boy, did they. Yeah, it's it's hard to watch. You got to grit your teeth to watch them now from today's point of view. I I think uh, one of the points we've made in one of our shows, not not this show, but a show we did years ago, was like. No, nobody's curing cancer in Hollywood. <laughs> you know, this stuff is just like, it's just for fun. It's entertainment. Uh, and so God, whether as, in, yeah, uh, as I said to an actor who we were doing a commercial and he was pitching the director new ideas after we'd been on set for 12 hours. And I said, hey, hey, come here, come here. And he comes over. I go, stop pitching new shit for us to be doing, okay? We're selling yeah. shampoo, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's sh- sell our shampoo and go home. Don't, yeah. be, don't be going for an Oscar here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just entertainment business. I mean, that's what it is. And I remember back in uh, when I lived in Chicago, I was doing research on the film industry in Chicago back in the early days, meaning like from 1915 mm-hmm. to 1920 before they went out to LA. Mm-hmm. And I read an interview in the 50s of by Bronco Billy Anderson, who I'm going to get off track here, but Bronco Billy Anderson was Anderson was the A in SNA Studios back in Chicago back in the early wow. days. Mm-hmm. And they had asked him at that time, are there any stories that you wish you could have told? And he said back, and this is 1950, Bronco Billy Anderson said, you know, there's only about 10 stories you can tell. <laughs> and I've, I've told all of them many times. Man versus yeah. man, man versus nature, man versus yeah. machine. Yeah. 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 So people are just, whether it be Indiana Jones or whether it be like the new Ghostbusters, all female Ghostbusters, mm-hmm. it's just like, just cut it a break, man. It's just like, <laughs> it's just for fun. You know what I mean? It's... Let, Nobody, let, yeah, and 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 that scene in uh, uh, Bridesmaids, God damn, that se- sequence is yeah. funny as hell. Yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure, my friend. You too. Thank you for everything. It's always, I've learned a lot about you this time. Really? About uh, really? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I, like your method. I like to see your method. <laughs> <laughs> When you develop a character, I like mm-hmm. to um, do a lot of background, a lot of background. <laughs> are, are, do you like go like I'm going to go out and live like John Henry Hoyle out in the? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John. Well, thank you everyone for joining thank us. You. Yeah, this and, is uh, human number two, and this is human number one. And thank you so much for for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.